Next up, I would like to call upon Mr. Ben Herzberg, Research Group Manager in Parva, and he would share his thoughts on the topic Trends in Cyber Attacks for 2018. That's not my presentation. That is my presentation. Wow, what a light. Okay, so I'm very happy and excited to be here, especially being before lunch. Keeping uh, people from eating is my uh, hobby. I'm uh, very excited at being here. I will not uh, describe our product as in Perva. We're leading uh, application security, database security, and DDoS uh, 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 company, DDoS mitigation company, of course. Uh, but we will talk about attack trends. This is a very fastidious uh, event for me. It's my first event after my newborn baby was born, a baby girl. Uh, so she is three weeks old, and I got a full night's sleep uh, traveling to India. And, and my wife will kill me on my uh, when I, upon arrival. So, uh, so enjoy my last moment. Um, okay. So because it's mysterious, I did the theme of something old, something new, something borrowed, some, borrowed something blue. Except I didn't find anything borrowed, so it's just something old, something new, and something blue. Uh, we'll start with some old trends, but always true. And uh, again, an apology. In 10 minutes, I will not cover all the trends in cybersecurity for 2018. Uh, so please do free, feel free to reach out to me. Either my contact details are in the last slide, or uh, just speaking with me. So first of all, that's always true. That's been in, in slides for like 20, 30 years. Attacks are getting bigger, they're getting easier to do, and they're getting more sophisticated. All of the above is correct, and this year as well, we've seen automation tools for remote code execution, we've seen automation tools for all sorts of uh, attacks. Uh, attacks are getting easier, there is more money to be made online, by, uh, uh, online and by, uh, by breaching uh, data. It's easier with cryptocurrency, it's easier to get cryptocurrency through attacks, it's easier to get cryptocurrency by selling uh, uh, data. So there is a bigger market, therefore more attacks. So even though there is more and more security controls, there is more and more attacks, because there is more attack surface and more motivation. Uh, Dito simplification, it was gone out of the scene, like decreasing for a few years, uh, because it's quite a stupid attack, it's basically sending a UDP service uh, a, spoofed, uh, a spoofed packet, uh, and then the, the server, for example, a DNS server sends the replies over to, uh, to your victim. Now it got back this year because uh, Memcache D had a bug where it, uh, it uh, allows you to perform amplified attacks through open Memcache D servers, and uh, the amplification uh, ratio that means that uh, the uh, for each kilobyte that you send, how many kilobytes will your uh, attacker get? Uh, instead of, for example, with DNS, it's usually 1 to 10. Here it's 1 to 10,000. So if I'm using a 1 megabit uh, direct line, I can cause a 10 gigabit, perhaps 20 gigabit DDoS attack. Uh, and, uh, and it was used for much larger attacks, of course. Another trend is IoT. It's an old trend for the last years. Uh, there's a trend of the IoT expansion, but 2017 there was again an exponential growth in the, I, in the IoT CVEs, the vulnerabilities disclosed uh, for IoT devices, and then also for IoT-based attacks. So uh, and this will continue for sure in 2018. The growth of IoT devices usage is exponential. Uh, their security level is uh, sadly low because it's uh, a small platform to secure. There is really no excuse in selling a very simple device and not securing it. And it's used mainly for DDoS attacks, also for account takeover attacks. It gives attackers a very uh, cheap way to create distributed automated attacks of any sort. So IoT is definitely an old trend that will follow us. Now I also have a for in 10 minutes, I also have a midway quiz, and I will ask only the first row. How many uh, in India um, cyber uh, attacks were reported to CERT in? CERT IN. I'll take three answers and pick the closest. Only the reported. Pick a number. Like all DDoS, uh, breaches, phishing campaigns. 
Okay, lakhs, 100,000. You? You may, I don't have two t-shirts, you'll have to split it, and you? Uh, well, that will be hard, so, so I will give it to you, because, uh, you know, well, so it's uh, 53,000 incidents just reported to the CERT, and think about it, that's like less than 1% of the attacks, and that's just in India, so a lot of uh, uh, cyber attacks, and all of you are doing a great job to stop these attacks in your uh, organizations. And we as the security industry is also hopefully doing a tremendous job at uh, providing uh, the, the means to stop it. Now let's talk about some more things. And gratefully, my, the last uh, talk was speaking about, uh, about this issue, so, so I will be short. Alerts fatigue, a lot of alerts are coming in. There are many solutions like SIM solutions and such. And uh, the problem is that uh, without domain uh, knowledge, without specific domain knowledge, these solutions often give a lot of false positives when doing, for example, a user behavior analysis without the context, without the domain knowledge. For example, about database attacks, uh, it gives poor results, it gives a lot of uh, false positives. So that's another trend. Not enough personnel, not enough SOC analysts uh, to handle all of these alerts. And this is another thing that we should look uh, into as security professionals. API security is becoming a bigger and bigger concern. Uh, we are uh, near to the point, like in a few years, we will be the point where most of the internet traffic will be API traffic, like machine speaking to machine. It gives other challenges. You, you can't uh, detect which one is a human, which one is, a, is automated. You have other, uh, you need to apply other means of uh, defense. And uh, just two days ago, before I took the flight, uh, the biggest Israeli price comparison website had a, a glitch in their API where uh, data was exposed and all of their users' data was exposed in their API. So uh, this is something to definitely look at. A lot of times it's, over, it's overlooked and uh, it's definitely going to be a strong thing uh, this year as well. Next is deserialization. It recently got into the OWASP top 10 as uh, one of the top 10 uh, application uh, security threats. And this is just the last quarter of uh, 2017. We we're seeing a surge, a big surge in uh, deserialization attacks. There were deserialization against Java platforms like Apache Strat, uh, like uh, other Java platforms. There, uh, of course, deserialization attacks against PHP, against uh, .NET, against many platforms, and we're seeing a surge of these attacks. Basically, it's serialization is packing an object, so you can send it, and then another device opens it. Okay, that's the worst uh, description of uh, deserialization, but for the time limit, that's the description. And this, this is how it looks like. There is binary uh, Java, uh, in this case, it's Java uh, object serialized. Then the attacker breaks out of this deserialization, executes bash, and from there he has total control of that machine, he runs the code. Uh, in this case he downloads this uh, malware to the, to the application uh, server and runs it. Probably, probably puts it in the front so he gets resistance. Another uh, challenge or, uh, that we will be facing in 2018 uh, in a strong way is the uh, battle between privacy regulation and security analysis. Um, uh, so, on one hand, we want to get to the bottom of our investigations. We want to, to understand whether a certain behavior is an attack or not. On the other hand, there is uh, more and more data privacy uh, regulation as well as compliance regulation. Sometimes compliance uh, regulation, for example, about database protection, uh, pushes organizations to make quick changes. And, uh, and this, uh, this actually hurts security, and this is something to keep in mind. But privacy regulations, except, especially when doing global security analysis like we do, uh, it needs to be done in the right way, otherwise there are grave consequences, both to the security and both in the legal ways. So it's something that I would definitely uh, you know, check where I'm standing as a security 
information security uh, protection. Then, uh, then there's crypto jacking, which gained huge uh, popularity. Like ransomware was, was uh, gaining a huge popularity a couple of years ago. Uh, crypto jacking is basically taking over machines in order to uh, mine uh, mine uh, cryptocurrency. And again, it has a really high surge in popularity, and therefore it gave the motivation for many attackers uh, to look for good ways to attack uh, uh, servers, either by running the crypto, the crypto mining on those servers, or by doing that on the client side, or, uh, by, by cross-site scripting mainly. So we've seen a, a lot of increase in that. Some of it is because a new cryptocurrency like Monero, for example, is not GPU dependent. It's a uh, uh, it's a CPU dependent. So it, so for servers with low GPU, it's also good uh, for attackers to uh, harvest uh, cryptocurrency. So uh, this this uh, was an analysis we did at September 2017, at the beginning of Q4, and this is already at the end of Q4. 90% of the remote code execution attacks that we've seen. Uh, on uh, web applications and mobile applications, 90% of those attempts were with the motivation of doing crypto, uh, crypto jacking, uh, taking over the machine and putting a, a crypto mining on it. Uh, so that took over 90% uh, of the remote code execution. And we've seen a lot of campaigns. Many of them came hours or, uh, or uh, a couple of days after a, a vulnerability was disclosed. The attackers had a very good incentive to attack. You're getting a very fast ROI in return on investment when doing those attacks. And on the other hand, when uh, someone is utilizing 100% of the CPU of your application servers, it can mean uh, bad things for your organization. I will go a little bit to something blue. Uh, which is an example of a crypto jacking campaign that uh, we have, we, we have uh, discovered. Um, the full details of this, as well as the trend that I was showing, as well as the other researches uh, that, we, uh, that we have, as well as information about regulation, is in our blog at blog.imperva.com, and you can read the, the, full, uh, the full thing. But uh, with this specific campaign, uh, first of all, the, the attack was very smart in that um, a lot of the work done was was DevOp done. It was like it's written by a DevOp engineer. Uh, it compiles the packages on the target server, so it doesn't transfer the malware inside. It, uh, it uh, downloads packages through Packages Manager. It's, it's like a DevOp engineer wrote this uh, code. Uh, so it's using the initial attack vector is using uh, uh, that the CVE 9805, which is Apache Strat's uh, vulnerability. That's where that's the entry vector for this specific worm. Then it drops the the miner itself, the miner, the the Redis one mine. That's uh, the name of the of the worm. It drops it. This is a worm. What it does. First, it runs on that application server. Then it starts to scan both the internal uh, network and the internet, the external network. And then it infects those machines. It's looking for two types of machines. Uh, one is Redis uh, servers. Redis, Redis is a great uh, caching uh, server. However, with wrong implementation, it's easy uh, to get exploited. Um, uh, if someone wants to ask why, feel free to uh, speak with me. It infects those Redis machines. Uh, uh, then it also looks for a Windows SMB uh, port, open SMB port. Then it attempts to run and exploit SMB, run code of that, that, that machine, and, uh, and uh, infect those machines as well. And you can see that, uh, uh, that this is uh, monetizing quickly. You can read that uh, in our uh, research. Another. Uh, uh, another interesting campaign that we saw was attacking databases, and it was uh, running a remote code execution on the database servers. And what we, what it was doing, it, it, it downloaded this picture of uh, Scarlett Johansson, and it downloaded this innocent, uh, well, I'm not sure, 100% innocent, but innocent <laughs> picture of Scarlett Johansson, and in this uh, image, the malware is hidden, so. 
if you're looking through the logs, you're looking, okay, someone accessed uh, an image, you're seeing the image, sometimes in, in our systems we also see the, the image, and the image itself contains the malware, then it's extracted by the offsets inside the file. Um, uh, so, uh, that was also a very interesting uh, blog, uh, and uh, you can read the research in our website. My time is up, so thank you very much, and before I finish, actually finish, I have a, an important announcement. Uh, uh, I came here from uh, Israel, I, uh, and out of my pocket, not company money, I bought some uh, Israeli chocolates, and I will uh, uh, put them in our booth, in our internal booth over there, so feel free after the lunch. And that's it, anybody feel free to reach out.